Hi and welcome back to this video in our Stem the Confusion series. Today's question is this. When during the year is the sun directly overhead in New Delhi or London or New York or Sydney? or any other city you want to consider. When is the sun really directly overhead? And by that I mean you cast no shadow. This is a good time to pause the video and think about it. I will pick up my narration in the month of June. You know that the Earth's axis is, is tilted. And in the month of June, the northern hemisphere of the Earth is tilted towards the Sun. And I must uh, issue a, a, a caveat that the Sun and Earth illustrated in this video are not drawn to scale because the earth is a hundred and ten times smaller in terms of its diameter so if the earth were this big then the sun would be bigger than this room or indeed bigger than the building I am in in order to make my narration possible these two objects are not drawn to scale so with the Earth's axis tilted and the northern hemisphere tilted towards the sun in the month of June, let's zoom in to see what's happening. Of course, the three important latitudes you recognize, Tropic of Cancer, which is 23, de 23 and a half degrees north of the equator, Tropic of Capricorn, 23 and a half degrees south of the equator. And let's identify three friends that live at different points on earth. B lives right on the Tropic of Cancer, C lives on the equator and D lives somewhere on the Tropic of Capricorn. Now which of these three friends can say in the month of June that the sun is directly overhead at 12 p.m.? Clearly it is D. C and D are off at an angle. They will cast shadows. B can say that the sun is directly overhead at 12 p.m. in the month of June. Now the, the earth continues its journey around the sun and in the month of September this is the position. It has completed one quarter of its orbit around the sun between June and September. In this situation, the sun is directly overhead the equator at 12 p.m. And that would be the equinox, equal days and nights. This is in September. So the sun would be directly overhead our friend C in September. And the sun continues its journey around the, uh, the earth continues its journey around the sun. And in the month of December, the earth is on the other side of the sun having completed half an orbit. Let's zoom in again and see what the situation is. Of course the three important latitudes are these three and our three friends live at these same places. We have B here and C and D. Now which of them can say that the sun is directly overhead at 12 p.m.? It is D. In June, the sun was directly overhead B and now directly overhead D. And somewhere in between in the month of September, the sun was directly above the equator. What does it tell us? It tells us that the sun seemed to move. We are talking of course about the position of the sun at the highest point in the sky at 12 p.m. At 12 p.m. in the month of June, the sun was directly overhead the Tropic of Cancer. In September it was directly overhead 
the equator and in December it is directly overhead the Tropic of Capricorn and as the earth continues its journey around the Sun the Sun appears to move up in the sky back towards the Tropic of Cancer what does it tell us that the Sun can be directly overhead only in the regions between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn so what does the answer to our question become in these cities which we were considering New York London New Delhi or uh, Sydney when is the Sun directly overhead it is never directly overhead at any point in the year and that is the significance of Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. It is only between these two latitudes that the Sun can be directly overhead at least one day of the year. And if you are north of the Tropic of Cancer or south of Tropic of Capricorn, the Sun is never directly overhead. Now we read about these latitudes in middle school, so did I. And I was asked to draw these latitudes on, on paper uh, and never really understood the significance of these latitudes. It is all about the movement of the sun, uh, the apparent movement of the sun uh, in the sky as the earth goes around the sun. And that is the answer to the question we started off with. And I will leave you with one other question. So, what is the significance of the Arctic and Antarctic circles? Having got a brief introduction about the movement of the Earth around the Sun and the, and, the, and the video you just heard, you should be able to figure out the answer to this question. Arctic and Antarctic circles, their significance. You may have questions that have fascinated you. You may want to send them to me and I will try and do a short video on those questions. You can also send your answers to the questions I ask. The email and the contact information, uh, they are all available at the end of every video. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.